Hello, everyone. Um, we're delighted to be here. We certainly uh, appreciate the offer from Creative to come share a little bit of time with you. Uh, basically, in 2002, when America's Army debuted as the first game out on uh, the Unreal Engine on uh, version 2, um, we were very ecstatic that there wasn't a single review of the game when it debuted that uh, didn't reflect very positively on uh, the wonderful work of Commander Russ Schilling, our first audio engineer. And uh, that was something we were very proud of. Uh, when we began this project, uh, having a very immersive player experience was something that was very important to us. And uh, sort of getting a realism factor in there was something that was very important to the US Army. Uh, what we're very excited about now with Unreal 3 is we've got a brand new opportunity uh, to do much better than that. And uh, the quality of our sound that we're working on, the fidelity of what we're about to accomplish is uh, very significant for us as game players, as casual gamers, which is what our studio is made up of. But we also have one foot in the serious games world and it's uh, very important and significant uh, to a lot of other groups. Now, one of the ways we're going to accomplish this uh, is with our very privileged access uh, to the U.S. military, um, to actual weapons, vehicles, and uh, soldiers of the U.S. Army. Um, so with that, I'm very happy to introduce to you uh, Sergeant First Class Doug Davidson, U.S. Army Special Forces, uh, who is one of our very wonderful subject matter experts, and he's here to tell you a little bit about how he gets us the access, uh, which Will and Nick will soon demonstrate for you. Afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Doug Davidson, as Philip uh, already introduced me. I'm a subject matter expert, and officially my job title is integration manager. And what that really is probably more uh, accurate because what I do is I try to ensure and integrate the development team with actual military personnel during training events and throughout the development cycle. So what we do is we go out to the Army, to different units that are conducting certain types of training that we're interested in and we feel that the development team would benefit from. We get permission uh, from those units and then we uh, incorporate our guys uh, into the training. And so we have two different types of events that we do. We have what we uh, call green events, where the developers are actually the ones being trained in uh, different things that you would uh, do in the Army. Um, they're actually trained on weapons, tactics, um, the use of a certain piece of equipment that you would find in the game. And then the other event we do is we uh, try to get the development team to come out and visit and do audio, video, and photo capture of uh, Army units uh, going through their normal training site, which we did about a month ago with Nick, uh, Will, Dave Kozlowski, and uh, Ian. So it's, um, it can be a little ad hoc at times, but I think we've built a pretty good system to try to get these guys where they need. And to me as a gamer, um, it translates through the America's Army medium uh, authenticity and realism that you will not really find uh, in other games. And I don't say that just because I work with America's Army, but I say it as a gamer. And I play a lot of different genres of games, and you just won't find the realism that you'll find in our game. And I know because having been there and done that, a lot of the stuff you see in games is a little fanciful. So we might not be uh, over the top in some ways, which a lot of people find entertaining, but we are, I think, the most realistic game out there. So, having said that... Hello, hello. My name is Will Brandt. I am the audio engineer with the America's Army game development team. And uh, I'm going to go right into it. Uh, first off, you're looking at the audio department. Right here. <laughs> And uh, I am responsible for uh, recording, mixing, editing, mastering, all of the sound effects, fully dialogue, and whatever else we're going to do as far as audio assets. And then um, this man over here, who I worship the ground he walks on, I do, uh, helps me implement and, uh, you know, program everything in and get it working. So that being said, um, with the daunting past 
uh, daunting task, excuse me, of, uh, of taking on such a large amount of assets. I have to have a very, very efficient approach, a very global approach to production. I have to be able to step back and, and really kind of think about everything I'm going to have to do in the time that I have to do it. So um, one of the great things about Unreal Engine 3 is that uh, as soon as we started working with UE3 and developing, uh, it allows me a lot more functionality. I can get in, I can work with signal flow, uh, I can import assets. And um, you can get into some really, really cool stuff that just, uh, you know, it would, it, overall, I would say, is much easier than uh, 2.5 was. Uh, in America's Army uh, 2.7 release, uh, I could do a lot of the asset development, but when it came to importing and programming, uh, I needed a lot of program assistance. Uh, creative technologies. Why I am very interested in EAX. Um, as we all know, we're moving into the next generation of gaming, and game assets will accumulate. Game developers have wonderful imaginations, and, you know, size gets bigger and bigger. And no matter how good technology is, uh, CPU resources are always going to be a concern. So again, we need efficiency. We need not only efficiency in a production schedule, but we need efficiency in data size. So I could go out and field record, um, say, for example, an M4 rifle, and I can go out and field record that weapon outside on a flat range. I can record it outside in some type of, uh, say, a hallway or a canal. I can record it inside and, you know, so on and so forth. And you end up finding that you have 20 or 30 assets just for the one fire of that weapon. What creative technologies allow me to do is I can take maybe three or four cut sounds of that info rifle, for example, and make them very similar and just kind of randomize between that group just to, to make it, um, that's a just here, uh, randomize between that group. And uh, what we do is we have the creative technologies uh, create the dynamic environment system. So we just set it up to go, you know, outside, inside, and we just, you know, created an environment system for that, and we've minimized our assets, and we still retain the quality. And on that note, actually, yeah, Pro Tools done. Good plan, good plan. Thanks for the save, buddy. No problem. <laughs> Shake and bake, buddy. But <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and roll right on into this. Um, this was our last field recording session. Uh, we were out in the south, and what I was running was a multi-mic setup. I had a six-mic setup. I was running on a sound devices, a four-channel mixer and four-channel recorder. Uh, I was mixing the rear stereo pairs from four to two, and then the other two microphones were placed uh, in other spots around the weapon, and they all had their own channels. So um, what I really wanted to capture here is the emotional presence of this weapon. And uh, when you're up close to an M4 and it fires, I mean, it's, it, it hits you in the gut. You get all this overpressure, it's loud. It, it's, it seriously sounds like a Rottweiler market engine. It's, it's just amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and play the raw sound. Well, raw mix. Method of engagement control pairs. Method of engagement control pairs. Triangle. And as you can hear there, we have a big, beautiful, luscious, natural tail on that sound, which is great. But again, referring back to what I just mentioned, we would have to do that for every type of environment that we want, and then we would just start accumulating assets. So in preparation for uh, EAX Dynamic Environment Systems, what we end up doing is we take the initial transient of that sound and uh, we chop it off right after the front. So it ends up sounding like this. We've got a lot of reverb in the room here right now, but um, so we end up really shortening that down. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have Nick go ahead and get a start, and uh, we're going to show you what it looks like, what we're doing again. Okay. 